Hi. Do you like computers? Do you like science? Do you like money? If you answered yes to all three, this might be the video for you. Hello everyone, my name is William and I am in my 1A turn studying computer science at the University of Waterloo. University applications are tough, so I want to help you guys out as someone who has finished his high school journey by sharing some of the information and insights that I've gained. So in this video, I will be sharing with you what good candidates for CS have in common, what Waterloo is looking for, and how you can better prepare and present yourself to maximize your opportunities of receiving an acceptance. To start, what types of applicants does Waterloo look for? In my opinion, they're looking for curious, hardworking, smart, and passionate students who will thrive in their intense academic and co-op programs so that Waterloo can make money off of your tuition and gain reputation through your future success. Now, how does Waterloo know which applicants will thrive in this environment? Well, they look at a few factors, starting with whether you read their admissions guide every night before bed and can memorize admissions requirements for every single program at the University of Waterloo. Okay, I'm kidding. But all jokes aside, I recommend you to make yourself as knowledgeable as possible about the programs you're applying to. After all, they're going to be a huge part of your life in the next four to five years. So you might as well inform yourself early on. Just as a disclaimer, this video is in no way professional advice and is for educational purposes only. If you do not agree with something I say, please let me know in the comments. I am still in my first year of uni, so I am still learning more each and every day. Now moving on to the actual topic of this video. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Arguably the most important part of the application. You guessed it, your top six average. Your average isn't everything, but if you want a competitive application, you must at least meet their minimum cutoffs of low 90s to mid 90s, as stated on their website. Due to the highly competitive nature of the program, the usual range of admissions averages is around mid 90s to high 90s. Most of the people who I know got in had an average around 97 to 98 and some even higher. However, do not feel intimidated. If your average isn't that high, it's not the end of the world. Take me as an example. Yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. So my top six marks were as follows. English, 92. Advanced functions, 95. Calculus and vectors, 95. Economics, 97. Chemistry, 97. And physics, 99. This puts my top 6 average at 95.83, which is definitely not as high as most of the people who got into CS. But just as a side note, I was in the IB program, which is why my courses end in 4U7 or 4UP instead of 4U1. Basically, you are curved according to your class. And needless to say, my IB classmates were much smarter and more hardworking than I was. And you can see the impact of that in my less than ideal English and math marks. So try your best to achieve a high top 6, but do not be discouraged by your classmates or others online. Your mental health is a lot more important, which is something I didn't really consider in grade 12. So focus on what you can change and forget about everything else. What are some tips I would give or things I would do differently if I could go back? Drop out of the IB program. I'm joking, but to be honest, the extra stress of IB internal assessments, mock exams, and extracurriculum we have to cover on top of maintaining a high grade 12 average resulted in a lot of unnecessary burden and pressure. However, this likely doesn't apply to you if you're not in the IB program, so sorry about the rant. Okay, moving on. I'm gonna get a scholarship to King's College. I probably shouldn't brag, but dag, I'm amazing, astonished. Prerequisites. Your top six must include any for you English, as well as grade 12 advanced functions and calculus and vectors. So if you have to choose between focusing on math and English versus your electives, it would be wise to focus on your prerequisites. This is because Waterloo places a lot more importance on their prerequisites as it serves as an important indicator on how well you will do in their faculty of mathematics. Personally, my biggest problem was with maintaining a high English average, especially in the IB program. And more likely than not, it will also be the lowest mark in your top six as well due to the subjective nature of the course. However, this is also an excellent opportunity to shine. Most students in CS I know have godly averages in their math courses and top six courses but their English mark is usually not as high. So if you're able to excel in grade 12 English, it will put you miles ahead of other CS applicants who have high marks everywhere else, but like me, can't analyze poetry or sh In all seriousness, having a high English mark would be an extremely helpful advantage. Please note that Waterloo accepts any for you English, not just the usual ENG for you. This is huge because if you are like me and have decent grades in everything but English, you are allowed to take 
another for you English course that isn't ENG for you. I had to take ETS for you as a part of my IB English requirement, but look at what your school offers. Courses like studies in literature and writer's crafts are all fair game. This is an excellent way of raising your top six average if English is the one that's dragging your high marks in other courses down. One last thing I'd like to mention is that I highly recommend you to fast track your grade 12 courses, especially your prerequisites. The reason I say this is because your workload will increase dramatically in grade 12 due to not only increased extracurricular commitments, but also academic pressures and stress from university applications. So if you're able to take prerequisites like advanced functions and calculus in grade 11, I highly suggest you do that. Not only will you have more time to achieve high marks in your prerequisites in a less stressful environment, you're also able to lighten your workload in grade 12 as well. Unfortunately, I was unable to fast track my courses due to being in the IB program, and it is honestly one of my biggest regrets in high school. This is because I 100% know I would have received a higher mark had I taken the course in semester 1 or semester 2 of grade 11. Not just because less stress around application season, but also due to the lack of time I was able to dedicate to the course material due to all my other IB courses. If you're able to get good prerequisite grades in grade 11 in the bag, you will have even more confidence to carry that trend forward in grade 12. However, being able to fast track likely depends on your guidance counselors and the course availability at your school. So if you feel like you're up to the challenge, go ahead and reach out. If you do not like the idea of fast tracking, that's totally fine. Most students do not fast track their courses anyways, but knowing you have half your top six courses down before grade 12 even starts can be worth the extra workload in grade 11 for some. I think that should be all for prerequisites. So let's now talk about... The problem is I got a lot of brains but no polish. I got a holler just to be heard with every word I drop knowledge. So the other three courses they're looking for is one for you and two for you or M courses. So be careful not to have three for M electives in your top six. Before I discuss which electives I recommend, I would like to first inform you what Waterloo does not like their applicants doing with their courses, which arguably has a larger impact on your application. During your course selection, keep in mind that Waterloo does not endorse students who take spares in their grade 12 year or who take their top six courses in summer school or online. As you can see, Waterloo prefers you to take a full course load versus having spares during grade 12. In addition, your overall admission score may be adjusted if you take top six courses like grade 12 English in summer school or online. Essentially, Waterloo doesn't like it when students use summer school or online school to boost their marks and may adjust the applicant's overall admission score according to their situation. Similarly, you should avoid repeating courses, especially prerequisites. So definitely try your best the first time you take them so you won't have to repeat it and be potentially penalized. Keep in mind that if you have a valid reason or explanation for the situations I listed above, Waterloo should be totally fine with that. An example is taking a course through summer school to free up a course slot in grade 12. As long as you can explain yourself and your situation in a reasonable manner on the AIF, Waterloo should in theory not penalize you. I just wanted to get these things out of the way because they may harm your application without you knowing, which I do not wish on anybody. Now for your three electives. Unless you are applying to engineering and you require physics and chemistry, I highly suggest you take something easy for your electives. From my personal experience, studying and revealing course material for math and English took up a huge chunk of my day. So a less intense elective won't only grant you a higher mark in that course, but also boost your ability to perform well in other courses too. So do not be afraid to take easy mark boosters like retail foods and nutrition or whatever bird courses you have at your high school. Unless you enjoy the challenge and know you can do well, I highly advise you to minimize your workload in grade 12 whenever you can, especially when you have extracurricular commitments on the side, and your mental health is a lot more important. For the three top six courses, Waterloo sees a 99 in your fruits and nutrition course in the same way they see a 99 in biology or chemistry or physics, which requires infinitely more work and dedication. You ideally do not want that extra stress in midterm or exam time. So you might as well take that time you would have spent on hard electives and put it towards extracurriculars or boosting your prerequisites or sleeping or whatever. Interestingly, Waterloo recommends the course ICS3U, Grade 11 Introduction to Computer Science. If your school is lucky enough to offer ICS courses, I highly recommend you take them. I am 90% sure ICS3U or ICS4U would be a prerequisite for CS admissions if every Ontario high school offered it. Since only a small number of schools actually offer ICS courses, they can only put it as a recommended course as opposed to making it mandatory. So if you have the opportunity to take ICS courses, whether it is at your school or during summer school or online, I highly suggest you take it. I was fortunate enough to take ICS2O, ICS3U, ics 3 u and ICS4U in school. It really helps you gauge whether you're actually interested in CS and want to dedicate your life to this study in university. It's much better to learn that you're not interested in computer science in high school than being miserable for the next five years of your life. Moreover, taking these courses shows Waterloo your initiative and passion in this field. If you're thinking of majoring in CS, you might as well start learning the basics in high school. 
Furthermore, it would be extremely helpful to gain programming experience and side projects through these ICS courses that you can talk about in your AIF, which I will be talking about in another video because this has gone on for way longer than I expected, and I need to start my CS135 assignment. I'm a diamond in the rough, a shiny piece of coal, trying to reach my goal, my power of speech, unimpeachable. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a thing or two through my experiences. All the other videos I found on this subject barely talked in depth about top 6 marks. Luckily for you all, but unluckily for me, I do not have a 98% average, so I actually have to worry about meeting the minimum cutoffs for Waterloo CS. That's why I'm able to share all these tips with you today on how one can optimize and achieve a higher top 6 average for Waterloo CS admissions. Most of the information I covered is probably out there on the internet, but I just wanted to compile and share my knowledge on this subject all in one place. Hopefully it helps you smoothen your journey through the stressful and momentous year that is grade 12. Since this video has already gone on for so long, I will likely make another one covering the AIF and other aspects of my application. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I will try my best to help you out. If you have the curiosity, drive, and passion to find this video, and you have the dedication to achieve an exceptional average, I sincerely believe you're one of the applicants Waterloo CS is looking for. Maybe I'll see you on campus next year. Until next time. For every burden, every disadvantage, I've learned to manage. I don't have a gun to brandish. I walk these streets famished. The plan is to fan this spark into a flame.